Okay, you're going to want to tune in to this episode of Cell TV. We're talking about lead and heavy metals, and I interview the most special guest I've ever had on this show. That's my wife, Marilyn. <laughs> but you're going to hear her lead story and how years of detox bringing out her lead, which she inherited from her mom, who ended up dying of cancer, having many hormone challenges along the way. And hearing the positive side of this story, my wife, who didn't end up that way, but inherited her mother's lead, which drove her hormone problems that very well could have and actually did end in cancer. But you're going to hear that story on this episode. Uh, but you're going to more importantly hear what we did about it. And yeah, I'm here in a different location. I'm live here in Boca Raton, Florida, because I'm teaching doctors this principle of going upstream, removing the cause. That's how you fix hormones. That's how you make a lasting difference in somebody's life. So guys, I'm here teaching doctors. I, I was passionate and I had my wife here and I wanted to really do this show for you. I tell a little bit, I tell in depth about what to do, about how to cycle, what real detox actually looks like. I even talk about some of the binders and chelators that are used incorrectly in detox and the mistakes that are made. I talk about why it's important to learn this process, which you're going to hear and learn a lot on this show. So stay tuned. This is a show you're going to want to share. This is absolutely a show you don't want to miss because this is why many of you don't feel well. Your hormones aren't working well, don't have energy, can't sleep through the night, but you're going to hear our story on that. You're going to hear some really funny stuff too because when Marilyn and I get together on these shows, yeah, the truth comes out. So hear what she was eating in college when we met 27 years ago. You're going to hear that on the show. Okay, stay tuned. Can't wait. See you there. Welcome to Cell TV. I'm here, special guest, the most special of all, my wife, Marilee. So listen, we are actually in Boca Raton, Florida, uh, starting my seminar here in Boca Raton. We have 250 doctors uh, showing up to learn about a topic, at least part of a topic today. And that's kind of why I wanted to do this show from here, because I've been really passionate on this topic. You know, I, I have to say, you know, you're going to hear Marilee's story in a moment about how lead, well, lead changed our life forever and our kids. And many of you out there possibly could not feel well, hormone problems, uh, and even leading to cancer, because that is part of Marilee's uh, story as well, because lead is that disruptive. And most of you may not know it. Matter of fact, lead comes out at certain times of your life. Uh, puberty, you'll hear that about my son's uh, part of this story as well. Um, perimenopause menopause. I mean, there's di multiple different times where the lead actually comes out. And the reason that is, is because it's stored in the bone. You're going to hear about that. But, you know, I, I have to say this, you know, most of you know my story and it's a mercury story. You know, one of the messages that I'm going to be talking, teaching doctors this weekend is that they're looking in the wrong place. Matter of fact, I'm going to play a video. You actually got to hear a little bit of the video is this one of the top scientists in heavy metals actually by accident spilled two drops of mercury on her gloved hand. Now, granted, it was dimethyl mercury, so it's a very organic mercury that goes right into our nerve tissue. But this is what these heavy metals do, and that's why this is such a... So she did this, and weeks later, she started getting exhibiting symptoms. She ignored it at first, and then she ended up checking herself into the emergency room when she literally started walking into walls. They did a blood test. And it was 4,000 times the level of mercury. Now, granted, she had exposures, which they did point out through many times of her life. But this was a massive exposure that sent her blood level up. So what they did is they put her on DMSA, which is a, a chelator that works very well to clear out the body and the blood pretty quickly. And within some days on it, the blood level was already going down. down. Bottom line is they got her blood level to normal. But the question in the video is, why didn't she feel better yet? Well, it's because it went into her brain. And they point that out in the video. This poor woman that they call KW actually ended up dying because of the mercury that went into her brain very quickly. The point was, is don't chase blood levels. Don't chase urine levels of mercury because the stuff goes deep into the brain. And that's going to be part of my message. And in Led's case, yes, it goes into the nerve tissue and it goes into the bone. So the point is, is don't chase blood or mercury levels, especially mercury, because 
it's easy to get out of the blood. But the problem is, is it has such an affinity for nerve tissue. Now, lead, on the other hand, we can actually see progressively go down because it's so in the body, because it's in the bone. Matter of fact, show them the picture. Do you have that up? I, I want to see the picture because merrily we've been, uh, you know, it's been years of taking lead out. Lead actually takes longer to get out of the body than mercury does. As a matter of fact, one of my pet peeves is the fact that practitioners will say, tell people, oh yeah, just do this mercury detox. And they do it for a few months, um, oftentimes even less than a few months, and they think that they were cleared of mercury. No, you cleared the urine, you cleared the blood, but it takes years to get this stuff out of the brain. It took me years. I did brain phases for at least four years, and then I still do them even to this day more randomly. Lead, they estimate, takes 15 years uh, to get it out because that's how deep it I is in the bone. I prefer to show you this one because my poppies <laughs> are in it. Well, here, here, you can't see it. You have to go really close. See all those tests on the floor amongst the dogs? Well, those are her tests that we've done over the years. And our, my son Daniel years. has, I think, four across the bottom. We were comparing ours, his, mine, yeah, to his. Yeah, exactly. I'm well, and, and actually, longer. that's a great point because my son started high as well. His last test was, uh, you know, normal, really. But the, one of the times when he was going through puberty, mm -hmm. um, he started getting this injury. And we couldn't figure it out. He actually had a, um, a scholarship uh, at Sugar Bowl Academy, and he was injured, and he wasn't able to ski. wasn't able to ski, and he went to the. We, they went. They took him to their best people, and we were taking him to chiropractors and other people, and trying to get opinions on what's going on and why he wasn't healing. And then it clicked. Oh my gosh, he's going through puberty. The bone remodels, and out comes the lead. And sure enough, we did a test, which it was one of those tests, and then it went back up again from the time that we cleared him when he was young of the lead. But because he went through puberty, the lead came back out, and it was keeping his body from healing normally. Look, this happens all the time, and people don't understand. So let's let's back up. You know, we have Marilee here as our special guest. So um, <laughs> the special guest of all. But anyway, you know your your Tory your your Tory your story. Um, I think tells a great lesson because many people out there have your problem and they don't know it. Now your lead levels started extremely high. And, and if you saw where they started, and by the way, in those things, when mm -hmm. we first started detoxing her, they actually went up higher. You started at a 69 mm -hmm. and then it went to 110 and then it's progressively, progressively come down. Um, but wh where did you get most of your lead? From my mom. Yeah. Who, and, and whatever environment I lived in, which was, you know, an old farmhouse with lead pipes, sat in gas lines, chewed, chewed on, on my crib. green crib, yeah. we <laughs> so, talk about that. lead paint yeah. in the, you know, because that was the 60s, right? And uh -huh. I was born in the yeah. 60s and the house hadn't, I don't think the house had ever been painted in years. Yeah, any house built before 1978 has lead, um, oh, yeah. even if they paint over it. So it was like but, early 1900s. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, look, I, you know, we, I, one of the talks that I've been giving this year um, is that we all grew up in the lead generation. Our parents grew up in the lead generation. And it's four generations of lead is the point that I make to people that, you know, we all have this. It's in us. And at these opportune times, when your body loses bone, out comes the lead because lead in particular is, in fact, stored in the bone. So that's what happened. I mean, well, your mom, I mean, briefly tell your mom's story because she led a life of unhealth. I mean, she did. I mean, um, I would say it affected her, her brain multiple ways. I would say it affected her hormones multiple ways leading to cancer. But kind of tell that well, story. It, but interestingly, my mom wasn't like a sickly person. Mm -hmm. she, not at all. So unless you really knew what to look for or understood what happens with, with neurotoxins, you wouldn't think for a minute that she was really sick at all. I mean, yeah. and, and, and that's the point. Well, that's many people watching. Right. That's, that is right. the point. And, yeah. and so, but long story short, you know, when things started, when she did develop breast cancer when she was 50, and when they, you know, did that lumpectomy and radiation and 10 years later developed uterine cancer, it was all, that is why, that is where it all came from. So then, you know, then it was the traditional process until that didn't work, and then it was trying to do the alternatives which just was too late so she got uh, she ended up with breast cancer she was considered a success story there because they went and removed everything gave her chemo the whole deal right 
I told her yeah, you better radiation. yeah radiation you better get to the cause um, otherwise it's going to come back well my doctor said it's not an estrogen problem they looked at my estrogen it's fine they didn't look at her estrogen metabolites which is a toxic byproduct of breaking down estrogen uh, like there's one called 4-hydroxyestrone that Merrily's came back smoking high again you know Merrily definitely uh, you know had some hormone challenges at this point but again, not any different than most of the world, I would say. Right? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I and, mean, I, just, and I, I think that's what I keep hearing. It's I don't care why things aren't working. It, if they're not working, there's a reason. And 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 whether or not you're categorized and put into this category or that category, it's your it's almost irrelevant. You just need to get to the root cause of why did that disruption occur in the first place. Well, you know, and it manifests. I mean, you know, when I met Marilee, I okay, we're probably gonna get in a little fight here right on camera. But um, she had <laughs> she, she there we go. Take, she would take I know, I know horse coming. pills. It's the same, it's the okay, same this story. is true. This is, this is 27 years really, ago. I should really right? develop this come. I should really yeah. have had plenty of time to prepare for a comeback. A new okay. one. So I'll she would take the these. Time. This was 27, 20 years ago. Yeah, that's amazing. So I, I, I'm smiling. I'm smiling because I do. I love her so much. 28 years with this woman. Anyways, um, she was taking these horse pills. Like it, it, the week before a period, it was like, I would like, what do you mean you're in bed? I mean, it was like, you know, and she would, she would take these horse <laughs> another, pills. To, oh, no, yeah. that's another story. Yeah, well, that's another allergy. story. No, but she had, she had severe allergies, <laughs> which she doesn't have now. But she would be in bed like twice a we year. We lived in Atlanta You know, her time. eyes would pop up. She'd have the things over and her I, face. And, but, and but by the way, he was already pills. rubbing off on me. Because I would not take anything for my allergies. And I didn't have bad allergies. They weren't that bad until we moved south. And then the green pollen coated the cars. And yeah. that's when they were bad. And I, because I knew better than to take anything, I would just stay in bed for five days. With a cold. I mean, Who I was, does I, that? Me. I was, I was committed to the lifestyle Here's the, at this oh, point. And when I went in her kitchen, when I first okay, met her. This, now we go back okay. two years right, right. from this point to the beginning. Yeah, to okay, the beginning. Right. Yeah, to the beginning. Sorry, there's a jet flying over. So Nine, that's wow, that's cool. 19, <laughs> 1990, 1991, probably, when we met, right? Yeah. No, 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 no 1989. No, no. I became a Christian in 1989. Okay, 1989. Yeah. Okay. And yes, and you would come to my apartment, and yes, and I yeah. had many good things. No oodles of noodles. Right, Snyder's noodles. hard pretzels and peanut butter. Oh, and potato and spuds. That that was what Potatoes I found. Potatoes in a box. That's what I found <laughs> in her cabinet. No, and I'm going. Here's me. I'm going like no wonder. All right, I'm know? about to defend myself. Yeah. Because right, they're going to spill that on me. Because All right. I went out to dinner every night. I, yeah. I only needed things that no, I could she, eat and I hurry. grew up on home cooked meals. All right, all right. So yeah. we're going, we're regressing. So, did I, so we could probably just have that whole conversation. But um, so, anyways, the bottom line is this um, she ended up with some hormone issues. Matter of fact, well, let's finish your mom's story. Then I, I do want to make a point here. So, her mom, 12 years later, well, 10 years later, mm -hmm. I mean, all, I mean, perfectly. It's funny because, see, that's the problem is they go in and they do their thing and then 10 years later they get a different cancer when you don't get to the cause. And that's exactly what happened. And of course they say there's no association, which is what they said, by the way, she ended up with uterine cancer and unfortunately she died two years later. She never got to the cause. You know, Marilee got to, there's another jet, sorry. <laughs> Anyways, coming into the seminar. <laughs> obviously we did it different, but you know, we had a scare and, and again, she'll probably come up with a year, but you were stage Four, which is was one stage away from full blown cancer, um, cervical cancer. Yeah, it was nineteen. It was right after we got married, right? Nineteen ninety six, yeah. nineteen ninety seven. No, it was yes, it was nineteen. It was nineteen ninety seven. And and back then we didn't run the test. It was years later we actually ran the twenty four hour hormone tests, which by the way is the hormone test that I recommend um, because it shows these estrogen metabolites that can be extremely toxic that do in fact drive these cancers, breast cancer, etc. And her four hydroxyestrone was through the roof, and but let's back up now because we got this diagnosis. They did. Um, we ended up going in. You tell the story because you, it was you. You know it best. Well, they 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 told me I obviously needed to do a colposcopy and take a tissue sample. And when they did that and came back with what um, what degree of cancer, pre cancer it was. At that point, they wanted me to. He was basically saying it's cancer, it's bad cells, and we, you know. Well, they wanted to take yeah. it out, take out a, whatever, you know, that portion of tissue. And um, 
obviously we said no and to assess our options, which was really, it was, we decided that I would fast. Yeah. So you were I mean, reading a lot about yeah, fasting just, at the time. Well, it, you know, it's amazing. I mean, I was, I was studying fasting, you know, years ago. And um, so this was it. This was the time that, you know, we'll put the power to it. And I left there. The, the doctor basically said, you'll be back. I remember that comment to this day because I, I left there infuriated. And you know, now I'm like, yeah, you're going to fast. We're going to show him. <laughs> well, we never went back at all. So we never showed him anything. But um, that's unfortunate. But no, the bottom line is, is that that fast did. It was the start of her transformation. Bottom line is, you know, it took care of itself. Body healed itself. And it, and it did. It took, I mean, it, it I think I went. You went from patch marriage to patch marriage. Each time it was getting better. Yeah, I went every yeah. three months mm -hmm. for, yep. oh, I think, nine months to a year. And yes, mm -hmm. every time Clear it improved. Out. Yep. Yeah, and Marilee fasted 12 days, uh, you know, and she was the original faster. I mean, <laughs> I'm learning about fasting, you know, and then when I, I saw what happened to her way back when I became a believer in fasting. However, obviously it led to later still seeing some hormone things going on and took a hormone test and saw the hydroxyestrone elevated hormone dysregulation. And then, of course, we were trying to raise up something called methylation because methylation pathways, and I don't want to get lose you here, but part of what this methylation does is it gets rid of toxic estrogen. And her methylation on the test, which was one of the things this test looks at, was tanked. So when you look at what depletes it, stress of any type, physical, chemical, or emotional, well, her super high lead levels, no doubt, was keeping her methylation down. So indirectly, the lead was driving cancer and other hormone problems in many ways, just like mercury or any uh, toxic heavy metal can do. So the bottom line is, is we were trying to improve the methylation. And we really didn't see much improvement on the test at first because the lead was still too high. But as the lead started coming out, then the methylation started improving. And her last two hormone tests were, you know, very good, you know, spot on. So um that that's an, in a nutshell basically your story to how we led to here but what else did i forget nothing i mean i think i think that you know it's just been really it's been a journey it's a journey i think mm -hmm. that's the first thing to not expect you know you, you do the right things and you can't just you can't just expect within a year or two years that you're going to see the result that you're looking for that's that's just not how it works right and in fact by the way, you know, I mean, as you see, I had, I don't know how many pages of, uh, did you yeah. count them? Yeah. I mean, there, and, it, and again, no, you don't have to test that often. Obviously I'm Mr. Experimentum, Experimentum. Yeah, and, we and, were and doing different things. There was a know, period there, which, which I'm I mean, talk about. I've been, I have been pulling lead out for 10 years and, and there were times when I wasn't, I, I didn't run a test. That's a great point. I didn't run a test for two years. And then there were times when I was running a test over a course of a year quarterly and, or every six months, I think it was. I, I want to show a point there. And I wish we actually had the test where we at home, I would show it. But um, so the one actually spiked back up and this was some years later. It's because you went some years without detox. I, I think I might have went a year to a year and a half. I really honestly didn't. I don't think I did more than that, but I really, based on the numbers, based on how felt I good. felt. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like um, most people would say, hey, I feel good. I did it when I was right. detoxing. Or I wasn't noticing much during a cycle, which kind of, you know, usually when I, everybody's different, but when I would detox day two, I would get very tired. Um, and that was always kind of my thing, like, oh, glad I'm doing this. With, with Mercury, you, you know, I would know when he needed to detox because mercury affects the brain. Oh, yeah. So with lead, <laughs> I, I'm not, it's not like I'm anxious. I'm not, I'm not angry. I'm not more, I just didn't have, it was a different set of symptoms. There's a little Dif different set yeah, of symptoms. Different, yeah. Definitely. So, but anyway, so, but when I would go back into detox, um, after not doing it for a while, I realized like, wow, I, I needed to do this. You would always say, oh my God, I'm sleeping so much. Yes. Better. After yeah. every cycle and, and During even in the cycle, the cycle yeah. I am. Yep. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of like fasting for me when I would fast and after a fast, I sleep amazing. So to her point with me is she would always be the one that would say, I would take, this was after literally some years of doing mercury uh, detox and she would say, you need a cycle, you need a cycle. And I'm, ah, you know, I don't need a cycle. So she was looking at my irritability, uh, right? Oh yeah. yeah irritability. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, and, and probably some other things, but anyways, 
um, literally, finally, I would, okay, I'll start a cycle. I mean, within like hours of starting a uh, heavy metal detox cycle, I would be like, oh my God, she was right. I mean, it was like, you know, it's like someone turned the lights on. You don't realize that the lights are going off. So I mean, many of you watching this, believe me, you know, you probably don't realize that the lights are down until they come up, you know, and then you're like, oh my gosh, I was sitting in darkness. So, you know, the bottom line is, is that, I mean, I know this to be a fact. Every one of you watching are affected by heavy metals. The generation, we grew up in the lead generation and the mercury generation. And our kids got it all because, ladies, the number of fillings you have in your mouth, according to the DRASH study, the TAGM study, is proportional to how much is in the baby's brain in utero. So mouth to baby's brain in utero, that's mercury. And, and of course, other toxins from mom goes into the baby in utero. And of course, we talked about the lead. The lead is, mom is the number one source of lead. So again, it's stored up only to become problematic as we end up with other sources, like, you know, like Marilee had and I had later in life. So my fillings then became even a bigger issue to a bucket that started filling, you know, in utero. So, okay, let me, let me talk a little bit about what we did. Okay. So this is more about lead than it is about mercury, but a lot of the protocols are the same, but you know, DMSA um, is a chelator that has what is called a thiorothiol group on it with a sulfur and a hydrogen. And has two of these that grab on really well, but DMSA is water soluble. So it doesn't get into the brain or the bone. So you're just kind of clearing every once in a while. That's kind of why we do cycles. You would do, you know, four to seven days on, you would do seven to 10 days off. And as we said, sometimes we took even more time off, mm -hmm. right? Especially as we got down later, we'd take a month off and then we'd be consistent, two months off, be consistent. But this was a process that we did. DMSA has a great affinity for lead. We didn't have cytodetox back then. Um, we used DMSA, which has to be used. Here's a big, huge mistake. If you haven't read my articles, there's three. When detox is dangerous, please read those. Matter of fact, you'll see some old time videos when we probably look a whole lot younger. Um, I don't know when that was. Uh, no, maybe not a whole lot younger. I don't know, maybe four or five years ago. So we look a little younger. But anyways, we did some videos on this as well. But it has to be taken every four hours under its half life. And you have to take it for at least three days. So those are rules. I talk about that in the article. Where the practitioners give it once a day, even every other day, big mistake. There's another a uh, key letter called DMPS that has to be taken every eight hours. You have to take it under its half-life. Otherwise, you get redistribution of metals. So that's why we want to keep the blood level up so it prevents any redistribution. And that wasn't really a great key letter for lead. Well, the anyway. DMPS wasn't. Yeah, no, right. The DMSA so definitely was. Yeah, you took DMS, DMSA mostly. And then we were doing suppository EDTA. Which, by the way, night. I love. Yeah, because you would say I when you, we added that. EDTA, which does a great job, of moving that's when I would sleep great yeah especially great um actually I'm gonna get some of that <laughs> <laughs> so anyways the uh that has we would use it it does it does a great job bringing out of the bone but it doesn't do a, a great job at least this particular there's different types of EDTA of bringing it out of the body completely we would match it with um DMSA so we do the EDTA at night, the DMSA every four hours during the day. And it was a combination that worked amazing for you. Yep. Which is a combination. I actually was reading studies and just realized, hey, this is, uh, you know, this is actually a combination that would work great. And it did. Now, today, we do a very similar protocol with uh, the cytodetox because cytodetox, it, some of the particles cross into the membranes in the cell, and even the, cross the blood-brain barrier, and some are bigger and don't. So it works great to help minimize any redistribution. So, but it can be, it can be combined with the DMSA used correctly and some of those, even the EDTA. So using multiple binders within the system, I wanna make a really important point, within the system of true cellular detox, which means just if you haven't watched these shows, go back and watch them on my multi-therapeutic approach or true cellular detox, we have them. But you have to upregulate cell function. Again, a mistake most people make in detox. Glutathione, methylation, the cell membrane, the energy of the cell, all of those are part of my five R's of how to upregulate the natural detox of the cell. Real detox happens here. So we're upregulating the, uh, the cell and its functions to naturally detox, that's where it has to happen. We're using these real binders and chelators that I just mentioned around it to make sure that the toxins go all the way from the cell all the way out of the body. And then we use another real binder with multiple binders that stays in the gut. It's called bind. 
and that one prevents retoxification from the gut back into the body. Cell, real chelators to make sure it goes all the way out of the body, real binders in the gut. So that's a process that I teach. It's a process I'm going to be teaching this weekend here in Boca. But again, then we have it in phases, right? We prepare the body, then we have a body phase. Oh, wait. We're literally, I mean, those jets are literally like right over top of us. It's pretty cool. But um, so the body phase is where we're just using these, getting the easy to get toxins. We're not going deep into the bone or the brain or the other organs. And then the brain phase is where we actually go deeper. And then we use something uh, called brain DTX, uh, which has an active ingredient of, of specific alpha lipoic acid in it that in the case of brain DTX is bound to ginkgo. It pulls it deeper into the brain and therein lies the magic because now you're using a fat soluble chelator that's able to <clears throat> move it that move it out of those deeper tissues. And EDTA does a good job you know, of that as well. So that's why uh, using these multiple different binders, upregulating cell function and binding it so you don't reabsorb and cycling week on, week off, four on, three on even, maybe four days off. Cycles are different for everyone. And I want to point that out. Those, the doses, this is why people need coaches right here. The doses are different for everybody. The cycle length can be different for everybody. Some people do better with longer cycles. There was times when we both did better yep. with longer cycles. Mm -hmm. Some people do better with higher doses because it minimizes redistribution. Some people can only take fractions of a dose, like, like small amounts of milligrams. You know, and the frequency. Some people have to take things more frequently than others and we've been through that all and by the way it changes because where some people don't do well on a cycle in the beginning after a period of time they do better on cycle than off cycle and so that you're better off actually staying on a little longer but when you're not doing good on cycle you're better off staying on a cycle a little less so there's so many rules of engagement there and if you read those articles I think you'll you'll come to some realization. Oh my gosh, there's a lot here. And, and you don't know what those rules are until you start until you dive in. Yeah. Honestly, you yeah. have to experiment. Yeah, no, no, no doubt. Yeah, that's why most of you listening to this need a, a doctor, a practitioner who who understands this. You know, especially if you have health challenges. Because so it's not just detox. I want to put a caution out there. And that's there. the other thing. It's not. It's not. just detox. Yeah. Well, it's a multi therapeutic approach, yeah. right? I mean, you know, I always tell people especially very challenged people who call and talk to Marilyn most yeah, often, right? Sure. Um, look, you know, a perfect diet won't get you well at this point where you're at in your health, but you won't get well without a perfect diet because you it, you need these things to control the inflammation. You know, I when I work with somebody, I, I'm so literally my goal is to teach them this process that I'm describing to you um, because if you don't learn it, you won't do this long enough to matter well and interestingly it, it takes probably six to seven months sometimes to figure out what that person's rhythm is yeah. because there's so many complicating factors that need addressed until you get to that point yeah so there's just sure. there's just so much that goes into it and 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 i think it's so important that if someone is sick and challenged you you can't just go out there and do it on your own and follow certain rules because the rules are always changing especially when there's something that is upstream and, and that is needing address. And, and it really is, takes that level of experience and expertise to dial that in, but to set someone up for long-term when they're, yeah. when they're right. Well, well, that's the, that's the key is to set somebody yeah. up, you know, because, um, then you can it, it, take what's been implemented and run with it. Yeah. That's and you know, your rhythm by then you like, like me, I, I don't need his direction now to detox. I, I'm, I get it. I, I know what I need to do. I know when my body feels well, I know, when I can experiment and, and when I need to pull back. I mean, I just, I have confidence you know, in that. All my kids know. Yeah. Well. Oh, I, yeah by kids. the way, I didn't finish that story, uh, which I will remind me to do that. But, you know, I, one thing that um, I'm going to be telling doctors this weekend is that very thing. Look, your goal, your job is to teach the person the process because it's years, not months. So if you're just treating them, they're not going to get treated long enough to matter. If you're teaching them, and by the way, that's what doctor actually means. Now you're empowering them to continue something that's going to take years. And now you're empowering them. That's how you change a life. And, and, and I would say that's the frustrating thing it, for us in yeah. this you know, business is that so many people think, you know, I've done this detox protocol or my natural health practitioner told me this. It's, it's, 
Yeah, it's hard. They, they just, they either, they don't fully understand or they're not fully invested because it is not just this. It is, it is this and a whole lot of that. And you have to really do it the right way well, and have respect for that journey. And, and like for use you as an example is that with that, you know, with some of the hormone challenges she had, we had to su extra support our mm -hmm. methylation pathways. You know, certain fats were really very critical, um, which I'm teaching on this weekend. The importance of the cell membrane, not just for detox, but for hormones. That was hugely important. Well, people get sidetracked, too. They say, oh, I have, you know, this snip or I have that. And it, it's it's just not that's that's just not an issue. It really isn't the issue. It, the issue is just having an understanding of how to do the right things and, and how to do them long enough and continuing that course. And, and yes, you might have these weaknesses. You know, for me, I, I, I did, I took, I took a methyl, a methyl donor because I lacked there, but there was a time when I knew I didn't need to do that anymore either. Yeah. And, and actually it was, it was not working to my benefit. Yeah. So there's things that you just, you have to, you, you just have to have a, an understanding of the big picture. You also have to be open to the fact that maybe some of the experiences that you've had to date have not necessarily, maybe they've been okay, but they haven't, maybe they haven't been okay, but whatever that may be, you just really have to understand and find and have respect for the person that's leading you through this process and setting you up. The invest, as I tell people, you're, you're paying a tuition, you're learning a process that has, it's invaluable because what's What's that worth at the end of the day to know that the person and the practitioner that you're working with really understands this and, and will set you up for that long term success? Because it is yep. years. I mean, as you see, I have been I have literally been pulling lead out for a decade. Yeah. And like over I said, a decade. And it, it comes been, out at, at yeah. different times. Oh, you know, I don't even know if I made that point. So she actually took that time off chelating and then we saw this, the lead come up again. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe I can't remember uh, if we saw certain symptoms. Maybe I told her, hey, you need to detox again. <laughs> but I don't know. No, I think it was just a matter of I should I should just test and see but, what's happening. Yeah, we did. But and we were like, oh, my gosh, it spiked a little bit. Not nearly where it was before, but it spiked back up because she had gone some time without detoxing. So that's the point, you know, is once you learn the process then you're able to do this because you're going to run into it where it comes out again. I, I have, I've spoken to people so many times where it's Harry like, menopause. you know, well, I detoxed years right. ago, right? I had my amalgam fillings out. I did this detox years ago. You know, I'm like, yeah, that was years ago. It's now moved from higher concentration, deeper tissues, you know, back out and you're feeling the symptoms. It's when it comes back out, you and start getting a lot of symptoms. Perimenopause is so I, we're, you know, I went through the child, bearing years, dumped all my lead into With every kids. child, you lose lead too. That's yeah. why it goes into the child and back. And the first child, I think, gets, not I think, I know, got the worst of me, right? That and was then, Daniel who right, went to the ski camp. Right. And now, and now Daniel, I mean, Daniel is a savvy detoxer. Yeah. I mean, he really knows himself. He dials himself in. He actually tells Danny, you know, hey, I did this, this, I did that. Yeah, this worked. That didn't work. I mean, he just—he's so confident, and the kid's not even twenty years old yet, and he's been at this, and has, and he's, and he's obviously interested in all, all of our kids. Himself. I would say all of our kids, all of our kids are very savvy. You know, added Olivia, uh, Isaac. I mean, I would say, and and Dylan's back in it now. Um, Daniel and, just tends to be more of an experimenter, but I think yeah. that's just the personality. I would say all, but, all but Simon, who we can't get to do much. Yeah, he, he, actually, story. I, I, I always say that when it comes to Simon. That's another story. <laughs> I, have, I have a test for him at home. And actually, uh, Isaac brought his test here, so he's going to be testing, yeah, I think, today, yeah. actually. Um, and So Isaac's levels, that's our second child. Yeah. I always show his at my seminar. So he had higher mercury. And the reason he had higher mercury is because actually when I, I so I knew enough, I knew a little bit to know that um, I needed to get the mercury out of my mouth. I had five amalgam fillings and I actually began that process, not knowing as much as we know now. So foolishly, I did, I took out I took out two amalgam fillings, I think, or maybe, I can't remember. I think it was one at that point. Because I think I needed to get it redone. Yeah. So I was nursing. So I, you know, pumped a load of milk, one, and... I don't even remember how you ended up with just one left. It was an odd... No, thing. no, I, I didn't. I just waited until the rest of them, till I was done nursing to get the other ones out. Okay. But I needed to get one replaced. That's right. And I think yeah. it was the one I just ended up getting a crown yeah, on right, last yeah. month. Mm -hmm. But... um. It was a, it needed re replaced. 
so I, we did, we redid that one. I dumped one load of milk, one, whatever, one batch of milk and went on my merry way. And lo and behold, Isaac is the one because yeah. of during that time that when I had that work done, that he ended up with the highest mercury of my kids. I, I must say this too, on testing mercury, there's no perfect test at all. Lead's easier to test for on these challenge urine tests. That's the mm -hmm. type, type of test we're doing. But mercury is very difficult. And the reason it's very difficult is because it's in the brain. So we're only able looking at a reflection and mercury moves out of the, the easy to get tissues very quickly and goes deep. So um, it's hard to find it on a test. So, but again, we, we look at your history. Um, of course, you know, different symptoms somebody has and different exposures, obviously they had through a lifetime is probably even a, a better indicator oftentimes. Silver fillings, and this isn't a show more about mercury, but they contain 50% mercury. If you have these fillings, you have mercury in your brain. That's what studies show. And uh, the, the key here is don't just go get these fillings out, please. Again, read those articles because there's a preparatory phase that we do first. There's a proper way to removing them. It was days after I got two fillings out, these silver fillings, that all of my problems and symptoms started. And unexplainably, I didn't find out until years later that it was that. And it's, you know, unfortunately, I suffered for four years, you know, not understanding what the heck was going on. So don't make the mistake. And by the way, don't make this mistake. Oh, I got my fillings out years ago. Here's another problem. When you do that, you literally start, the metal will start to actually mobilize. So the moment that filling comes out, it's even more important to detox. Or I hear this. So I got my fillings out and I detoxed. How long? Three months. <laughs> it's like, no, you know, it's, it is it's years getting it out of the deep tissue in the brain. So if you got them out in the past, you actually potentially have more problems. A lot of people get them out in the week that they go through what we call a honeymoon period where their circulating mercury drops and they actually feel better for some months. And then six, nine months later, they start to get new symptoms. They start to get sick again, but they don't remember that it was this. So I call it the honeymoon period. And all of a sudden they're sick again, thinking I took care of my amalgam. So now what's wrong? That's <laughs> still here it turns this mercury vapor vaporizes and it turns to inorganic mercury in the brain where it's locked for life unless you use the proper agents to actually remove that out the proper system to do it so look at you know once sensitive to one neurotoxin you become sensitive to all now you become sensitive to mold now you become i couldn't get rid of my candida you know it's like because my metals it hides and protects itself in and around the mercury and hides from the immune system if you will and it was, I would knock back parasites at times. I would knock back candida and it was just, it would come back. It would come back. And then once I got my, my mercury down to a certain point, then I was able to actually beat those pathogens back. So oftentimes the down, the pathogens are downstream. And I, I want to say one more word in closing here that one of my big things that I'm going to deal with, with doctors this weekend is the fact that they're not looking upstream far enough to truly get people well today. You hear the testimonies. Matter of fact, I have, how many patients did I say? Five, I said, I think five. five patients, clients actually coming to this seminar. Five clients that got their life back and now are doing this. They're actually teaching, you know, they want to learn more so they can actually help people. Two of which on stage are giving their testimony. But again, you would hear the story of they did all of this perfect stuff. They ate the perfect diet. They did this, but they still didn't have their life back. And the message is this. They never got upstream far enough to the cause. And many of these doctors coming, they're very into functional medicine. They know they run a lot of tests. They're very privy at how to do that. However, if you don't remove the lead, if you don't remove the marker, if you don't remove these hidden infections, so I'm going to talk about cavitations, another massive hidden infection in root canals that why people are sick. If you don't remove or get yourself out of a mold exposure, if you don't look to the cause, then you're just wasting people's time and money. And, and that's, that's the message, man, because alternative medicine today, my biggest critique is the fact that doctors are not going upstream. And one of the messages when, I, when they hear these stories of these clients um, of mine, they're going to hear this, you know, they're going to hear that number one, you know, I did all these other things, you know, what was the difference? Like they got upstream, 
And um, they're also going to hear, um, I, I was going to make another point, and then I, I actually forgot it. But anyways, so it, gosh, there's, there was such a good point in there. But the, there, the, the bottom line was, is that you have to get upstream to the cause. And when you get upstream to the cause, you know, that's really the, the trick. And, and that's, what's been, that's what's been missing. And, you know, these doctors are going to hear that. We're doing a cell TV right now. So Here comes Warren. <laughs> There's Warren. You can pop your head in. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I guess it's time to check out. Yeah, well, hey. It's it's time. So I hope you heard that message. Those of you watching us, and uh, we're gonna check out. Hey. Say hello. This is Warren's hey. uh, girls. Hey. Aren't hey. they cute? Hey. Yep. Hello. Hey. This is Arela. This is Tutu. Say hi. <laughs> Tula. Hey. This is Tula. Hi. hi. Yeah. <laughs> It's kind of like having the doodles. I know, right? Yeah, usually these are our doodles popping up on our laps when we're doing the show. Oh, so, well, anyways, there you go. Right. There's a, there's a lot of lessons for you. Read those articles. And it's a family affair, and, as and you already know. It is, right? Warren's Absolutely. my cousin, and you know his story too. Yeah, we're here training doctors, and Warren teaches them uh, all the how to market and get this message out, which we need to do. So, all right, love and appreciate Bye, all everybody. of you. So, okay, from sunny Florida. Oh, all right. Gosh.